Um, hello and welcome back to another episode in the series looking at the design and build of a um, G-Series Simplex in 009. Um, so this is where we currently are. Um, this is just fresh off the printer. Um, I have had a, a couple of iterations now of trying to um, strengthen the print, um, dealing with making sure the axle boxes survive printing because they're quite um, not fine but when they're attached there's not much holding them in place especially these little kind of details down at the sides um, and also dealing with the the grill on the sides of the loco if you remember on the the previous print and you can kind of see it here um, the sides were bulging outwards um, essentially there wasn't enough material um, in the side by the time I'd carved it out so you can see yeah, you can actually see through it it's slightly uh, translucent that's because the wall was quite thin to start with and then obviously I um, cut away the the holes for the mesh um, and that left this really um, flexible squeegee uh, side panel um, but you can see on this one um, it's now nice and solid I can't squeeze it um, I've made it a lot thicker and you can see you can't see through the sides from the inside anymore you can't see out um, I also made these strips across the side panel um, kind of raised off the side it's a bit difficult to see in the print but they're ever so slightly raised um, they were flat to the side panel uh, but on the real thing they're kind of like a almost like a triangular shape welded across the the side panels um, it looks like essentially there's one big hole cut in the side the mesh put on and then they're welded on the top I assume again that's to stop the mesh actually uh, flexing um, so maybe that's kind of a, a prototypical problem uh, anyway um, so yeah so I had to do a couple of weird things for that so to make it so that it looks like there's a hole around the sandboxes I thickened the wall and then cut a slot in the back uh, just big enough for the, the sandbox to clear um, so it still looks like there's a hole in there as well as the sandbox lids um, but yeah, it seems to it seems to work quite well. So um, here's one where the supports are only just kind of half off. Um, actually, that's not the one I wanted. Um, it, well, it'll do. This was a this was a test print to see if I could print it without the seat and then fit the seat. Um, but that didn't work. Uh, actually, here's the one I want. Um, so this is another one fresh from the print. You can still see it's wet. I've washed it with water, but it's it's wet. Um, so these are my custom supports. So essentially, they're kind of thin triangular wedges. They come to a very very thin. Uh, point at the top but there's enough to support the material and if you watch with this one I can literally just flex and it pops straight off um, and leaves a nice clean uh, surface and I've now got these for the bottom of the axle boxes so again um, it just falls off uh, leaves the axle boxes in place and you can see kind of how how fine these triangles are they come up to a very very thin top uh, but that's enough to Enough to support and gives a nice, nice clean separation. So that works. That works nicely, as I say. Um, very little cleanup, uh, and I now seem to have a, a print. Uh, but prints only half the story. Obviously, this thing needs to actually be moving. Uh, now, obviously, you've seen me in previous videos fitting um, the uh, Portram chassis inside the model. Uh, but as I may have mentioned, normally the Portram chassis um, has a circuit board attached to it that does with, deals with stepping down the voltage from the 12 volts to whatever the motor uses. I think it's 3 volts but I'm, I'm, it could be 6, I'm not entirely sure. Um, either way, it can't take the full the full 12 volts. Now unfortunately um, there isn't enough room in here for the circuit board. When I did the Alan Keefe K12 uh, loco, there's enough room for the circuit board to go in the engine bay um, and be all nicely hidden out of the way but there isn't enough room on here, it's a, it's a smaller loco. So um, to fix that what you need to do is essentially add a resistor um, to to the, to the setup um, so that the 12 volt power won't damage the motor so that's what I've done um, I've taken um, I've cut the wires off I've used a 150 watt a 450 ohm uh, resistor here um, it's on a tiny little bit of um, well, it was sold as uh, PCB sleepers for making your own track, but essentially it's just a tiny, tiny piece of um, PCB. I put a, cut a groove down the middle, um, surface mount resistor across the top, uh, wire from a pickup on one end, and we'll get to the pickups in another uh, wire to the motor on the other end. That gives me the, the 150 ohm uh, resistance to step down, uh, and this works nicely. Uh, now, 
the pickups we've possibly talked about this before but the pickups are these brass um, or copper um, brass I think um, or poss yeah possibly bronze they're these these strips anyway that point up and you get these two kind of like circular things coming up out the top of the of the bogey now um, when this is inside a tram essentially there is um, a phosphor bronze strip that presses on top of these contacts so the bogey can twist but they stay in contact with that strip and then that passes the power to the circuit board uh, where the motor, motor is then plugged into the circuit board obviously on here that doesn't work so what I've got um, is essentially two bits of phosphor bronze wire um, they're glued you can see the ends here they're glued under this piece of black plastic um, and then held by friction you know they're slightly bent where the holes are on this strip to keep them in place uh, causes them to kind of be slightly bendy uh, and be pushing against the against the um, against the pickup and that works that works quite nicely and as you can see it's quite a small a small package uh, what I'll do now you've seen this is I'll wrap this uh, in electrical tape to avoid any chance of uh, of shorting it out and the little bit of black plastic is actually again something I designed when I was doing the K12 uh, loco which I've just printed a bunch of I'm trying to get it so you can see it without it being in too much light or shadow but essentially it's got two little grooves on the outside which hold the phosphor bronze wire and then that square on the inside and the square on the inside um, fits there's there's one of these holes one of these square holes in both ends of the bogey um, so it fits into the, the hole on the bogey um, in theory it's a, it's a tight friction fit um, but I've actually glued it in place because it's just the, the chances of it popping off are still still reasonably high so a tiny little dab of glue um, to hold the, the, the rods into the strip and then the strip onto the bogey uh, and that fits nicely in place um, and it all fits nicely inside the as I, say, I haven't actually had it in this in this body yet because I was testing it on a uh, a different I had a different body oh and I've just pulled it off never mind um, I'll have to glue it back into place I've just managed to pop it off when trying to get it in I did have it in a in another loco and I'll put up the video on the screen I've actually had it running up and down um, the test track um, just to prove it works and it's fine it could do with a little bit more weight um, I'm trying to find the body I had it in. I had it in this body. Um, this one wasn't great because I cracked the. Um, is it this one? No, maybe it's not that one. Anyway, there's a body somewhere where it's got a cracked side uh, side frame. There was a chunk taken out of here when I was messing. We're trying to work out what supports to use. Um, but yes, um, it runs nicely up and down the track. So I just need to glue this back in on again now. Um, clean it up and glue it back on. I didn't use very much glue, um, so obviously I've popped it off. But that will fit now nicely inside the model. Um, so yeah, I think the only thing now is 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 painting, um, and I should have uh, a completed model. Um, in theory, there's nothing, there's no controls inside the cab, um, so I'm in two minds as to whether print those or add them as scratch details when I've finished. We'll have to have, I'll have to have a think. But in general, it's painting, and I, ha I went back to this duff print it's got soft sides um, that had a, a grey primer and I just brush painted this with a couple of coats of the yellow um, and that's worked quite nicely um, it's a bit streaky my brush work not great um, so probably airbrush um, and then I'll have to do the side panels in black and then um, dry brush over the yellow and I'll have to be careful about uh, potentially masking up the the edges of the panel so that that looks that looks right um, it doesn't need to be as bright a yellow because obviously you want to um, emphasize the black um, on the real thing the yellow doesn't look so bright because there isn't as much of it and it does look like you can see through the panels so that shouldn't be an issue um, so yeah so I just need to <laughs> fix this again uh, glue it back in place um, and um, decide whether I'm going to add controls or not uh, and then and then paint it and we should hopefully be done as I say we've got a driver figure which helps with the weight it being a uh, a white metal driver but he's not great um, I mean he's perfect pose wise really uh, but he's not great as the way he's dressed and everything so I might look to see if I can find an alternative um, but if not he'll he'll do um, which is good because it gives as I say it gives a nice bit of weight um, over the over the chassis because obviously the this is very light and the model itself isn't very light isn't very heavy sorry 
um, so a little bit of weight would be would be good um, but yeah I think that's uh, that's it for this update but um, hopefully um, next update might, might either be an update or we might might move on to a, a, a finished video um, we, we shall have to see exactly how it um, how it all goes uh, but until then uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to make sure you don't miss that when it appears thanks So I just thought I'd show that with a, a bit of glue, uh, the clip's back on um, and it will uh, run nicely up and down the track. It's a bit temperamental um, when it's not got any weight on it. Um, as you saw in the other video, when it's got weight, the driver figure on the body on, um, it's a lot more a lot more stable. Um, also, my track gauge isn't necessarily entirely accurate, having been hand uh, hand built. Uh, but there you go; it does does work even without the even without the body on. Uh, so yeah.